So I lived in Boston for 10 years and I did three years of full-time Alzheimer's research during that time. I used to go to the morgue every Thursday and do brain cuttings on humans and work with human brain tissue. And one thing people usually don't know about the human brain is cholesterol is by far the major component of the brain. The brain is the most cholesterol rich organ in our body. It contains about 25% of the total amount of our body's cholesterol. What's confusing is statin drugs lower cholesterol, so they should be problematic for the brain. But if you Google search statins and dementia, you find things like statin use was associated with a slower cognitive decline. In other words, they're good for the brain. Or 36 studies found that statins were associated with a decreased risk of dementia. Again, supposedly good for the brain. And results like that seem to dominate the search or at least half of the search results. They suggest statins lower the risk of dementia rather than raise the risk as if statin drugs are better for your brain even though our brain is the most cholesterol rich organ. Why all this apparent contradiction? What's going on? Well, first, I can't help but point out that the annoying Google autofill that they use to control people's thoughts, the autofill that you can't get rid of, the autofill that always has 10 suggestions, once you add the word profits after statins, the autofill suddenly goes quiet. It suddenly knows nothing. I know nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Interesting, right? Seems like all the biggest organizations are on the same team here. It's an uphill battle giving the true story for sure. But anyway, statins were first approved in 1987, about the same time the media started demonizing cholesterol and animal fats like egg yolks and red meat, things our ancestors ate for thousands of years. And the first statin, love a statin, cashed in an ice cold billion dollars that first year. And by 2009, statins were generating $35 billion. So this cash cow has been producing for a long time. So anytime we talk about statins, we need to keep in mind that money will influence a lot of the research and the findings are going to be suspiciously favorable towards statins. It's imperative we keep that in mind as we weed through the scientific research. So getting into the research. Since I brought up the topic of red meat and ancestors, let's start there. Researchers have done studies on Bolivian hunter-gathering tribes that supposedly don't live past the age of 37 because of all the red meat they eat. And in 435 people from the Samani tribe that were over 80 years old, 1.2% had dementia. And in 169 people from the Mosetan tribe, also all over the age of 80, they found dementia rates of 0.6%. And this wasn't some nonsense questionnaire study. They actually did brain CT scans and other tests, and it took them three years to complete the study. Now, this study is especially interesting if you keep in mind that younger people from high-income countries like America, where 69% of older adults take prescription drugs and 22% use five or more on average, Americans aged 65 and above, rather than 80 and above, have about a 10% incidence of dementia, rather than a 1% incidence, so it's, a tenfold, it's tenfold worse in people that are supposedly healthier. Cancer, heart disease, diabetes, depression, anxiety, other things, they're also very similar to this tenfold worse number when you start comparing hunter-gathering tribes to modern Americans. But point number one is people eating a healthy ancestral-based diet, rich in animal products, plenty of physical activity, have very low brain disease rates, making statins unnecessary or possibly harmful. But let's look at a couple of pro-statin studies where they find statins decrease the risk of dementia like Google wants us to lean. Like I hinted at before, these are going to be association studies, but I'll explain more in a minute. So going to the Harvard Medical School website 2021, they mentioned the concern people had when the FDA issued a warning that statin users report short-term cognitive impairment when taking statins. But they cite a JACC study with 18,000 people where they found no differences in any outcomes comparing statins or no statins. And keep in mind that they're just looking for associations here. In my experience, you can literally find an association with anything if you use the correct mathematical model. So it's actually surprising to me that they didn't find anything. In fact, what this tells me is if you hired the correct mathematician to do biostatistics here, 
I bet money you could find a mathematical model that shows statins increase cognitive impairment and make it worse using the exact same data set. But anyways, if we move forward in time to 2024, let's look at a study done by The Lancet. Now keep in mind, The Lancet is the organization with the worst recent dietary guidelines I've seen in recent history, literally just regurgitating the US government food pyramid recommendations that failed miserably for the past 20 years and exploded the numbers for diabetes and obesity and people actually following the food pyramid eat more grains guidelines. Look at the diet, the Lancet diet recommendations. They have a huge emphasis on eating high carb foods like rice, wheat, and corn if you break it down by calorie percentage. And then, of course, a ton of those processed industrial seed oils that give all the teenagers acne and give older people that old person smell like I've talked about in a different video. And don't forget about soy too which needs to be about 4% of your diet by calories because wink, wink, it acts like estrogen in your body, but it's a good estrogen. So that's the Lancet. Anyway, the Lancet statin brain study from 2024, now with about 100,000 people, suddenly is using Cox proportional hazard models with competing risk regression to estimate the sub-distribution hazards ratio, obviously. And they're finding statin use is now associated with 20% lower risk of dementia. Of course, you know what happens next, right? The headlines. Time to write hit articles that say statins slow cognitive decline from all the mainstream puppet organizations. That's how you influence the unknowing public, of course. Cox proportional hazard models with competing risk regression to estimate sub-distribution hazard ratios. And this is your true litmus, litmus test if you wonder if your news organization is trustworthy or if they're just mascots for big pharma companies. If they say there isn't enough evidence to say for sure, that's probably trustworthy. If they say millions of people are on statins but many more should join the bandwagon and concerns are based on myths, I'd be skeptical of those, those organizations. Okay, so there's some dissenting opinion. Let's shift over and look at studies that suggest statins are bad for the brain. Keep in mind, it's literally common sense that having nice high levels of cholesterol is good for the brain because it's a massage percentage of our brain. And you also see that in cases where parents force their babies into a whole food vegan diet. They actually cause literal brain damage from chronically low cholesterol. Cholesterol is made from saturated fat which is basically animal fat. So if, you've never eating, if you're never eating saturated fat, your body can't make cholesterol and it's bad for your brain, especially during development. Cholesterol is good for the brain. That's a foundational scientific starting point. In fact, first looking at studies without any statin involvement, you can find lots of evidence that lower naturally occurring total cholesterol levels are associated with poorer brain performance on cognitive measures. Now again, this is an association study, so don't put too much faith in it, but there are a lot of studies finding this. If you dig deep enough, you might be able to find a study that shows low cholesterol is good for your brain performance using Cox proportional hazard models with competing risk regression for sub-distribution hazard ratios. But again, if anything, I'd be biased to believe lower cholesterol is bad for brain performance and higher cholesterol is better for brain performance, even if the studies were 50-50 on this topic, simply because it's just the way the brain is built. But it's not just cognitive performance. There are plenty of studies that show high cholesterol later in life is associated with decreased dementia risk at least with legit 80 year olds, not just people that are 65 years old in poor health on five or more prescription drugs. High cholesterol decreases dementia naturally. Furthermore, when you look at fat intake studies, remember, cholesterol is made from saturated fat. You find that the risk of mild cognitive impairment or outright dementia is elevated in subjects with high carb lancet diets but this is reduced in subjects with high fat and high protein diets. Good thing all the nursing homes don't serve applesauce, oatmeal, bread, sugar pudding as the main food staples, am I right? High fat, high protein diets means lots of animal products. That's what they should be giving elderly people if they truly want people to thrive. Now keep in mind with a lot of these association studies, there are also a lot of confounding variables. I'm not gonna outline all of them here, but. One quick example is chronic smoking significantly increases total cholesterol. Things like that 
make the epidemiology studies messy because if you lump smokers and non-smokers you'll find people with high cholesterol are often less healthy because that group has all the smokers things like that make association studies extremely dubious especially when there's profit motives or agendas or global warming agendas hiding behind the curtain in the study and it's worth mentioning they still find high cholesterol is better for cognitive performance and it decreases dementia in a lot of studies that's how overwhelmingly good for the brain cholesterol truly is even in that smoking group it's still good one last study i think is the most telling relating to cholesterol and dementia and by the way alzheimer's is a type of dementia it's not the only type it's just one of the types so when we talk about dementia we're including alzheimer's in this discussion so this study from the Journal of Nuclear Medicine, they did a two-year positron emission tomography scan, a PET scan, not just an association study, and they found that statins were associated with accelerated declines in cerebral function, declines in brain function. And here are some of the actual brain scans. You can see on the top row, when people take statins, they have more red, which is code for bad metabolic decline in the brain. The brain is not working very well. In the lower row, people without statins, you see far less red. The brains are working much better. And when I do consults with people, even young people, they often complain about brain fog when they take statins which makes sense if you have metabolic problems in your brain on statins. And various brain issues are common when you look up side effects for statins. So it all lines up here. Furthermore, the brain is very sensitive to sugar levels, glucose levels, and statins mess with that. I'm currently working on another video on the topic of advanced glycation end products, ages, which are proteins, fats, and DNA that's coated with sugar, and you find all sorts of brain disorders linked to having sugar-coated fats, proteins, and DNA, advanced glycation end products. And what's more is statins are known to increase onset of type 2 diabetes by 38%, actually even higher in people that are overweight or obese. So again, it doesn't make sense that they would be good for brain health. The PET scans, with or without statins, that show metabolic problems, seem to most accurately align with all the other basic tenets of brain health. So in closing here, there's an argument that statins are good for the brain because they are anti-inflammatory, but I'm not a fan of this line of thinking. I'm a proponent instead of eliminating inflammation by eating healthy and exercising. There's no free lunch when it comes to health. You can't eat a high-carb lancet diet of seed oil-soaked corn chips with your Mountain Dew every day and expect to fix your health issues by taking a multi-billion dollar drug that doctors are taught to push, push, push. Just eat healthy, exercise, and in my personal opinion, keep the cholesterol nice and high by eating animal products. Overall, it's good for your brain.